guys, I'm so excited today because I'm here with Bobby from Flavor City and he is going to show me some grilling tips. What are we making today? Well, to celebrate the official start to the grilling season in Chicago and then during that horrible winter, we gotta celebrate the grill. So we're gonna make a grilled fish tostada with grilled avocado and a crunchy jicama slaw. Awesome. So it's pretty much half the ingredients are grilled. You're not running inside and outside. It's really chilling max. Awesome, let's get started. So what are we gonna do first? First off, let's start with the guacamole, but it's gonna be a grilled guacamole. Throw those on the grill. Okay. We only wanna do those for about three or four minutes so they get nice char marks. Okay. Otherwise, the heat will actually start to melt the avocado. But I just think it kind of sticks with the theme of grilling and chilling. Mm -hmm. And it's just gonna add a little bit of charred smoky flavor and just you know tie it all home. Nice. So you're gonna do the avocados. Uh -huh. Why don't you throw on the limes too? So while you throw on the limes, awesome. I'm gonna to toss on some red onions here. So like it's very rare that I've ever had a grilled guacamole, but if you char limes, it kind of brings out some smoky flavor. Yeah, it makes it a little bit smokier. Right, smokier, kind of jammy. And then I'll just hit the onions here with a little bit of salt. And you know, right. you know how good caramelized grilled onions are. So imagine all I these do. ingredients <laughs> into a guac. It's like the best guac yeah, ever. Yeah, sounds amazing. So these will do its work for a few minutes. Okay. We'll finish it, but I think we should move on to another kind of cool kitchen hack that's gonna take us over. Okay, what are we gonna do? So, I don't know about you, but I watch a lot of cooking competition shows, <laughs> and they're always talking about acid, acid, acid. Yeah. So instead of making our own pickling brine, why don't we do a little cheat, and you grab all the way in the back of the fridge, there's always some kind of like pickle dry, so right? So smart, and it, yeah. Like, whether it's empty, you got one, why not use that pickling liquid that's already done for you, throw some of those thinly sliced radishes. We're just gonna dump them in? Yeah, dunk them in. You all already right. thinly sliced those, and like by the time we're done, with our whole recipe, we can just throw some of those on top and they're gonna add that nice pop of acid that the judges, you know, if we're on the show. And how long do they need to soak for? Um, I'd say minimum 15 minutes. But if That's you could do it. That's all it takes? Yeah, minimum. But if you could do it overnight, even better, but they'll stay in there for up to two weeks. So oh, why, nice. why bother mixing the vinegar, the salt, and the water, and the peppercorns when all the hard work is done for I you already? I bet they're good on other things oh, too, right? Yeah. Salads. Any kind of entrees that are really rich and savory, it just brings some nice acid to the party. Okay. Right, so I think before we move on, we should check the avocados. How awesome is that? I can Love feel it. like it's heated through and it has a nice char mark. And if I check the oh, limes too, I love that. That's what makes just the lime juice over the top. So it's we'll, like we'll take those off. Down yeah, there. It's caramelized and jammy, and it's gonna make the uh, guacamole so good. Yum. So let's take those off. Okay, take great. The guac and move on. Awesome. So then just scoop this avocado yeah, right in here. Scoop the charred avocado in there. Okay. And then great. I already chopped up the grilled onions in there. So those are ready. Awesome. And then I feel like, you know, they always say like one avocado per person, but I eat so much guacamole. I feel like you just should go above and beyond with your this I one. totally agree. So I'm going to squeeze in the charred lime juice. And it's so cool because if you check it out, it comes out kind of like those charred, you know, a little kind of smokiness. Yeah, the color in here is beautiful. Yeah, the color has that char. So do you want me cool. to do another one? Yeah, let's do another half, why not? All right. So while you're doing that, I'm gonna grab something that some people don't always put in, but I like to do about a teaspoon or a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. I think it's a fruity olive oil that we chose here, and mm -hmm. it just goes with the creaminess of the avocado. I'm with you on that. And then while you do that, I'm gonna hit it up with a pinch All of right. kosher salt. All right, I should salt. just go and start mashing, right? Yeah, mash away. Use those uh, biceps. Ugh. I don't know how creamy or chunky you like it if you're team creamy. I'm team both. <laughs> <laughs> I like it to be a little creamy, but I like when you get a little chunk of avocado. Then yeah. you know it's homemade. Yeah. You, you know, you don't want to mistake it for something that you can like buy at the grocery store that was made two weeks right. ago. Right. You could mistake it with the stuff at the restaurant, although they charge okay. eight dollars for one uh -huh. avocado, and you could pretty much make like ten servings for eight dollars here. So homemade is the way to go with guacamole. That is looking unbelievable. I know. I love how you can see some of the charred bits in yep. here. Yep. Everything kind of charred and smoky. Beautiful creamy avocados. So we're gonna okay. smear this yeah. on the bottom layer of the tostada and build everything on top of it. Awesome. Everything's better with guac. All right. That looks good to me. Looks good. So now we're gonna make the slaw and we have the creme fraiche in here already. I'm gonna add mayo. Right, mayo. Okay. And this is a red cabbage and a crunchy jicama slaw. It's okay. kind of crispy, it's refreshing, and it really adds a lot of texture to the dish. Awesome. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna add the lime yeah, to this? Yeah, add some lime juice to that. Okay. I'll throw a pinch of uh, about a tablespoon or two of some fresh mint in there. Yeah, I just I think it kind of pops and adds mint. so much flavor. All right. And then while you're whisking that, I'm going to give you a little fresh cracked pepper and some kosher salt. Awesome. And this is going to add a really nice bite to the tostada because the fish is grilled. A 
little bit of texture from this. It just builds lots of flavors, lots of textures. And I can just see, looking at that, it's so and awesome right now. And the jicama and cabbage are both really crunchy, too. Yeah. So it's not that same soggy slaw that it's a lot of people soggy. are yeah, used to. It's not soggy. Yeah, this ain't going to be no soggy mess. Add a handful of this in. Yeah. And I like jicama because it's like a cross between a potato and an apple. Mm -hmm. That's just one of those things that I don't really use that often, yep. but it's so refreshing. You want to hand me some tongs? Yeah, you got it. Toss it. Let's mix that up. I'm going to hit it with a little more fresh mint, which I almost can never get too much of. Oh my god, look how pretty this is. All the colors. Absolutely. And probably one thing I'd say is you don't want to mix this too far ahead of time, otherwise it starts kind of getting soft and wilty. Adding more of the purple in. Go for it, why not? <laughs> That's colorful, you know, you eat with your eyes first. So imagine once we build it's this. so pretty. Layers of flavor, layers of texture, color. This is pretty much everything you want for grilling and chilling. So how's that? That looks perfect. Awesome. Okay. That looks good. Why don't we move on to the final step, which is the fish, and then we're eating. Awesome. <laughs> So now we're seasoning these. Yeah, so you got the Am swordfish over there. Am I doing too much, too little? No, be aggressive. We want some bold flavors. Awesome. So you've got the swordfish with cumin, smoked paprika, salt, and pepper. And then before that hits the grill, you know, sometimes fish can really stick, which is a no-no. Yeah. I like to take out double insurance. We're gonna put olive oil on the fish, but also on the grill grates. Okay. And that ju that'll keep it from sticking? Yeah, it'll prevent it from sticking, and then you know, you'll have a nice crust as opposed to the fish being crusty on the grill. Yeah, no, we don't want that. I think that's one of the that. things about grilling and chilling is, you know, season your grill, make sure everything, everything's good there, but also you don't want to be running in and out of the house like a madman. So bring everything out you need, sometimes two of everything, you know, two tongs, one for raw, one for cooked. Mm -hmm. That way you can just chill, have a cold beer in your hand, which by the way we need very soon. <laughs> and then you can just have fun and be outside. Yeah. So why don't okay. we get that on the grill, then we can season the other side. That is just beautiful. Oh, I already seasoned the other side. Okay, you are way out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> you are much faster than I am. A plus. <laughs> <laughs> so these are so thin, they're gonna probably take about like two, three minutes each side. Awesome. And the nice thing about swordfish is that it's really meaty. You know, it's not gonna fall apart in the grill like maybe a cod would, and it's kind of steak. You know, it's kind of meaty and like a steak. So this is one of the better grilling fish. This is probably the best grilling fish. Okay. For sure. You could also do mahi mahi. Okay. Um, or salmon's also really nice. Yes. So two, three minutes, we'll flip it, we'll assemble it, we'll eat it, and we'll drink it. How do you know when it's ready to be flipped? You can actually see on this, because it'll start coming up. See how the white marks are already starting from the bottom? Yeah. When those get about halfway, we'll flip, flip it. Them. And then you want to take it off right before it's finished cooking. That way the carryover heat can take it to the temperature you need. So now we're going to assemble? Yes, time has come. So why don't you grab a tostada? Okay. Guac. Absolutely. And while you're doing that, I think there's one piece that doesn't quite fit on the tostada, so Just I might as well. Just taste test it. Taste test it. Oh my god. Is it that good? That spice crust has so much flavor and it's so juicy inside. Yeah. So is that enough guac or more? Maybe a little more. Okay. Just spread it out over there. Yeah, so with the green guac on the bottom, and then I'll hit it up with some of our crunchy jicama slaw right on top of that. Pretty. Now why don't you try one of these uh, pickled radishes and see how quick the pickle uh, got in there. I'm just gonna go right in with my hands. I will not judge you, so don't worry. Great. So it's been about 15 minutes. I feel like minimum flavor, bud. Oh my god, they're so right? good. Right, a nice little acid pop. You have to take them out for this though, because I just licked my hands. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> so why don't you throw a couple fish pieces on top of there. Okay. But look at that, green guac, white creamy slaw. Look how pretty this is. Gorgeous. I love those grill marks. That's what grilling and chilling is all about. Yeah. And just not supposed to be messy. I mean, it's not yeah. going to be like pretty food that's going to look fancy. Yeah, how good does that look? Like that. Okay, one more. And then maybe hit it up with a little bit of that mint for garnish. And that is so awesome. I want to eat that. I think we should do that. <laughs> You can get the recipe on learntocook.com and I really want to thank Bobby for coming and helping me out. Where can they find more of your videos? Uh, on YouTube, you search for Flavor City. We have new cooking videos every week. I'm a home cook, the recipe's for home cooks. I had a blast cooking with you today. Thanks so much. Thank you, Lauren. <laughs>